Good afternoon, everybody. It's Eileen again. I'm going to be uh, reading a couple more short stories today. Again, this is out of the Chicken Soup for Women's Soul, and it can be used for everyone, of course. Okay, uh, this is a rather short one. Uh, let's go ahead. It's called The Night I Wrote My Pulitzer Prize Winner. There is a quote from Helen Keller included in this. It says, I long to accomplish a great and noble task, but it is my chief duty to accomplish small tasks as if they were great and noble. That's a great idea. We can all do little things. Okay, on to the story. As a writer, I felt that someday, somewhere, my work would touch human hearts, bridge continents, unite generations. One night, it did. I'm at McKelvey's Tavern, sipping Amber Bock. The blues band is on a break. A small white haired man sits two bar stools away. I've got 10 kids, he boasts, and two grandbabies on the way. My youngest daughter is in the army. I think the world of that girl. Last five years, she's been in Germany. Does she call you? Sometimes, but with her schedule and the time difference, we don't talk much anymore. His lips tighten as he uh, looks into his beer. It costs a bundle to phone over there, you know. She tells me, call collect, Dad. Nah, I can't put that expense upon her. Write a letter, I suggest. Oh, I can't hold a pen anymore. I've had four strokes. My arm is paralyzed. To show me, he lifts his lifeless limb with his good hand. I grab my journal, open to a clean page, and lean forward, pen in hand. Well, what's her name? Susie. I look into the bloodshot eyes and ask, shall I start with dear Susie or hi Susie or Susie, how the heck are you? All of that, he grins and he exhales smoke. Dear Susie, I slowly repeat, then pen the words, you talk, I'll write. He presses the bit of his cigarette stub into the small tin ashtray in front of us. He reaches for another camel, he lights up and inhales. Tell her I'm down to one pack a day and I eat every day at the senior center. The food is wonderful, spaghetti, cake, ice cream, all you can eat. He adds with a chuckle, but just no beer. I listen and I'm writing nonstop. Tell her I think the world of her. Tell her Jen and Dave are getting married and Pat and Tim are getting divorced. Tell her Uncle Wilbur is up on Doe Island working the pumpkin patch. That's where all my kids grew up. As I listen, a kind of intimacy opens between the wizened old face and me. Tell her not to worry, I've got no complaints. I dance every night I can. His eyes sparkle. Tell her to remember Grandpa Jones. He died jogging at 104. That gives me more than 20 years. Tell her I think the world of her. His voice kind of quivers, he gulps a little beer, and then he wipes his mouth. Two blank lines remain on the second side of the paper. I pick up his limp arm, place my pen in his rigid hand, and squeeze his fingers. Go ahead, you sign it, I urge him. To add leverage, he couches his left hand around his writing hand. I watch him etch each stroke. The scribble reads, Jove da. I know he means love, dad. The pen rolls out of his hand. His right arm kind of flops over to the side. With his left arm, he reaches a finger beneath his glasses and wipes a tear. Thanks, he says in a half whisper, and then he clears his throat. No big deal. I write in this journal every day. I pat his shoulder and I leave saying, when the blues band plays next Saturday, you bring Susie's address. I'll bring a stamped envelope. On the way home, I wept because I knew I had gotten or just written my Perlitzer Prize winner. So that's a neat story, two people helping each other out. Okay, um, I'll probably be uh, recording a couple more stories here in a minute. Let's just take a break. <laughs> 